or if you want to see the video, see, you know, Faisal's beautiful face, see uh, Muhammad, never mind. And uh, <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Marketing While Muslim. This is the show from Muslim CEO, myself, Amin, Muhammad, and Faisal, where we come to you with uh, marketing problems or business problems, and we try to solve them live on the show. There is no editing going on here. It's purely from the top of the dome, as they say, yeah? Um, every single uh, week, or every single episode, uh, we come, uh, one of us comes with a unknown problem. The other two don't know about it, and then we'll spend the episode trying to solve it. There is, uh, it's available on all podcast platforms, so you can listen to the audio version, or if you want to see the video, see, you know, Faisal's beautiful face, see, uh, Muhammad, never mind, and uh, <laughs> uh, and see the screen, you know, because sometimes we, you know, we share the notes we're taking or the design that we're doing on screen. You can see that um, in the link, I believe it will be in the, in the description of this uh, video and stuff. Oh, you can find it on the, is it Muslim CEO blog perhaps, Muhammad? Indeed. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's uh, the format and we're on episode 10 right now. So uh, I believe it's Muhammad, it's your turn to come and hit us with that problem and let's see what we can do with it, inshallah. Okay, assalamu alaikum, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulillah. So what I thought we would do today is I think that one of the big, big kind of, uh, you know, sections of uh, our industry is education. Um, and I think that there's lots of different types of education out there, Muslim education, there's Islamic education, there's Arabic education, there's education institutes out there. So what I thought we would do is I would like us to do some sort of marketing for a scholarship fund for one of these institutes. Okay, so what happens with these guys is that obviously they have paid courses, which someone will come, they'll pay money for, and then they also want to get clients or get students who can't actually afford it. So for example, in Al Maghrib Institute, we would have a scholarship fund uh, for students who couldn't afford to come to Al Maghrib. They would just apply, uh, they would go through a process and then they would get awarded uh, a scholarship for that. So what I want us to do is come up with some uh, level of marketing uh, spiel or something to do with um, how we're gonna get money for this scholarship fund. Mm, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Fantastic. So I'm going to share a question for you, Muhammad, yeah. like starting from the basics, why would you have a specific promotion for this? Um, because for example, let's say um, I'm starting out, I've got my uh, Arabic Institute, right? And I'm teaching people Arabic and all this kind of stuff. Um, I feel like I need to grow at some level and part of my growth is going to come through sales. Part of my growth is going to come through uh, uh, donations and contributions to the scholarship fund. So I need to be able to promote that in a way where uh, people actually see it as valuable and beneficial. Okay, understood. So it's like a kind of a second offering or second Incomplete, revenue yeah. stream. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you don't think that you could achieve that by have just fully promoting your, uh, let's say, Arabic course. And then anyone signing up, you say, you know, would you like to um, donate a place for a fellow student who can't afford it. Yeah, so I think I think that's, that yeah, could that, that, could, idea that, that idea. could be one of the funnels to it, but I yeah. think that it needs its own kind of uh, identity in some form of like explaining okay. the benefits and why it's important sure. and what it is and stuff. Okay. okay. So, so do you have a uh, like a, a hypothetical institution institute in mind or uh, a type of No, I think what, I think Arabic you got, I don't mind you guys choosing with me. I was just thinking Arabic is a very common kind of education institute type thing. Um mm -hmm. and then at the same time it has a bit of a challenge, right? Because the offer might not be as strong as for example Syrian orphans, right? And so like it's it's a bit of a challenge for us as well to do something like that. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, great. So let me open up the document and share it with you guys. Let me know if you can see the screen yeah great okay great so <laughs> you, you can always I'm, I'm a bbc reporter I'm <laughs> <Yeah. to know>. <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> this, this, this is what i do first by the way yeah? yeah this is what i do sometimes like oh, if i'm on a call and this and that i'll go like this and i'll put myself on mute and i'll go get out of the room 
Get out of the room now. <laughs> okay, they can't lip read. Okay, cool. So, you have to prove it's, it's unedited. <laughs> Live and edited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, cool. So, um, do we follow the five piece formula? Do we have another formula in mind for the way we're going to do this? Do we want to do irresistible offer? What are we thinking? Yeah, maybe offer is more applicable here. No? What do we call our Arabic Institute? Latikh Institute. Yeah, we're going to call it Ya yeah, Arabic Institute because you're at the end of the alphabet. There you go. Ya yeah, Arabic. Get it? Ya yeah, Arabic. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I know it's one of, your, one of your favorites. <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, what is the. So, who, who, who is this for? Uh, so who, is, for is, for, is, it, is this for the layman or is it for the scholar? No, this is going to be for this. No, no, we're not talking about the thing. We're talking about the scholarship fund itself now, right? So, who are the people that we are targeting for this? This is for the whole institute, not the scholarship fund, right? Uh, no, because we're saying the whole thing. Do you, do you want to do it separately for the institute? I thought we could just go into the scholarship fund specifically and make it up as we go along. Yeah, I actually thought we would just get, do create the offer um, yeah. for the scholarship thing. But yeah. The offer doesn't require people and problem and all that, does it? Uh, no, but we want to get clear on the type of avatar that we're going for, right? Okay. So... Who's the type yeah. of person that would, uh, you know, give towards a scholarship or donate towards something like that? Okay, yeah. So these are the people who are going to give, right? Um, would they be maybe above 30? Yeah, Muslim professionals, I guess. Um, above 30? I don't know. I just think that people are a bit more idealistic when they're a bit younger as well. But, yeah, but, but would it, yeah. I'm trying to think of the type of person who wouldn't necessarily take the course, but they would sponsor someone yeah. to take it. Mm. So, so, uh, so, so someone younger doesn't necessarily think about legacy, Saudi Rajari, all that kind of stuff. That's more when you're getting a bit older. It okay. might be because they've got older parents or people have passed away, and they think, oh, yeah, that is, is that stuff. So that's part of it. Saudi so Rajari is a good uh, example of something else. So above 30, you guys thinking mostly men, mostly women, mix, like... Maybe 50-50 or like with most good things, women slightly more than men. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Um, obviously Anything they're earning else? a bit extra, a bit, a bit more than average, right? A average person, you know, yeah. I don't know, 40K or something. Are they, are they into this kind of stuff? Like, are they the type of person that's like, Oh, I never got to do Arabic properly, so yeah, I, I think that's what, I, that's what I was exactly or what I was is it more I was that I appreciate Arabic and I've learned it, I want someone else to do the same? Yeah, it's, I think it's definitely not going to be the type of person who never wanted to study Arabic because that type of person uh, wouldn't see the yeah. benefit in some... Yeah, someone some who appreciates else. the power of it, basically. Okay. Um, try to think of the what's the mindset these people have. Um, like maybe the these types of people they have money but not time, mm -hmm. so they want to make their money work for them since they have that. So in a way, they want to do good. Yeah, I want to do good Don't with their money because they can't do so it. much time. So want to use the money yeah okay cool oh, that's good enough yeah. give us a good idea right of the person okay cool what's next so we're doing the offer right yep so <clears throat> do you want to bring the framework up because I don't remember. Do, do well, you, there's just a lot for one. Yep. I, I'm not sure if we'd go with the irresistible offer in that sense, because what what we're saying is it's kind of like, um, person, you know how how we did uh, some stuff on funds, right? It's like uh, describing what is it, how does it work? Is, isn't it that type of offer rather than it being a this is what you'll get and stuff? Because the irresistible. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, so you're, you're saying is that talk about the top line as in like, yeah. uh, the benefits of the of the you know like what why we're we going out with it yeah. instead of oh this is what you'll get if you donate to yeah, it. Yeah, it's like That's you know the kind of things we're talking about. Yeah, yeah like, you're talking about the abstract. Why, yeah. What? How does it work? You know those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Rather than it being a, a specific marketing type offer, right? And uh, you know part yeah. of this is like you know we, I mean knows that we got we got asked this question, isn't it, about like going out for people to kind of do this because the why is the most important thing in that sense. Right. Mm. Um, so even, even from a, what, like, what would you call it? Would it, would it just be a scholarship fund or would you call it something different? To me, I, what I would do is I would link it to the Quran. Basically, okay, that's, good. that's why we, that's why we um, learn our, uh, learn Arabic yeah. at the end of the day. This is the, our guidebook for life. And so if you don't understand Arabic, you don't, you can't live by the book. Essentially. Yep. That's good. Um, yeah. So for me, it'd be, um, the chronic Arabic. Maybe something like the live by the Quran fund or something. Mm, okay. So it's purely linked to, uh, the, you know, somewhat, I, somewhat uh, unlocking the power of the Quran essentially. You know, I was reading uh, on the children's guiders uh, in terms of Arabic. Um, and what I found in there, there was a hadith at the end where they were talking about the Sahaba and they were saying that uh, the people of Allah, right? And they were saying that the people of Allah are basically uh, those that are attached to the Quran. I'm paraphrasing, mm, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So even like uh, the people of Allah is actually a good the one. As well. meaning. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I was what thinking you... we could name it after a person. Mm. You know, you have funds named after people. So if you could find a some kind of Sahabi who uh, didn't know Arabic, they're not Arab, and they obviously learned the Arabic and then they That's understood the Quran. I like that. Uh, I don't know, potentially like, I don't know, some man of Farsi or something. Mm. Fund. Mm. In some of Farsi is quite... Who's the most famous non-Arab uh, Sahaba. I mean, Bilal, obviously. Bilal, yeah. Bilal Radhi is one. Who else is there? I mean, there's Bilal, there is um, Suhaib Al Farisi. Yeah, Suhaib Al Rumi. Those are the main ones I know. Suhaib. Obviously, there would be some Jewish ones, yeah. but even the Jewish yeah, ones. Yeah, exactly. The Deccan, there'll be. Oh, some other, oh, these are, a lot of these are quite famous, but the, t there'll be a bit of a. It's not as obvious uh, when you, when yeah, you, yeah, that's what I would, education yeah. required. Uh, yeah, yeah. Around we need it. to do the research basically to have this, but the, uh, the concept is name it after a Sahabi who had to learn Arabic, you know, they didn't know Arabic naturally. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that gives us some ideas of like what we're going to call it and stuff. How would you refer to it? Like, what would you guys say is a good offer in that sense? Because obviously scholarship has a different connotation to donation, right? Um, what they're doing is actually donating, but even the way that you do it and sadaqah and this and that, like what kind of words would you guys advise using in that sense? So share, share is a good, good word. So that like mm -hmm. you're sharing the book or, or, or yeah. provide, provide an like opportunity. Yeah. Give the gift. Classic. <laughs> yeah, but what about the actual term? Because I'm I'm talking not more around. You're saying instead of using the word fund. I'm saying yeah, well, instead of using fund like or scholarship or scholarship, like are those the right things to use, or uh, is there something else? Or can't think of another word than fund really. Um... <laughs> I mean, if you were going to, you call... could replace the word scholarship. Mm -hmm. You could call it an empowerment fund or a mm. something, another word fund. Fellowship. Fellowship. Isn't a fellowship something else? Mm. Just run the Lord of the more, Rings. More, more about academia and stuff, isn't it? <clears throat> mm. I don't know what it means, really. Um... Fellowship of the Rings, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, empowerment fund. Okay. I mean, you, if you were gonna if you were gonna create something uh, to the side of it, it could be a foundation as well, right? It doesn't just need to be a fund. 
Um, mm, yeah, that's if this became really big or something. Yeah. I know Vayner has a foundation. <clears throat> Do they? Okay. Cool. So let's let's kind of get into some of the whys. Uh, well, you know, a unique twist on this could be yeah. it's a waqf. It's like a trust that you're not donating to make get somebody to learn Arabic once. You're donating to build an asset that will constantly fund people to uh, learn Arabic. <clears throat> Mm. Mm. I like the idea of waqf because that, that could be used as a good name as well. Trust, I mean. So it could be the uh, live by the Quran trust, right? Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's obviously a whole other angle, but yeah. Yeah. But I, th I think it's it's interesting because, you know, you, you want the whole point of me doing this with you guys today actually is to try and create more of a wow offer to something that most organizations are probably doing very poorly, right? Mm. The, all they're doing is, hey, like give money to our scholarships, right? And what we want to do today is kind of use more like uh, marketing magic, uh, magic, dust, dust. magic dust type of thing to make it be like, wow, like I actually, that's a vision. I want to, I believe in that. I want to be a part of that type of thing, you know? Um, so in terms of a why, like what, what some of the things that are coming to your mind in terms of learning Arabic and, and being linked to the Quran and stuff? So we believe... Um, I mean, we can you can start with anything. We believe the Quran has been sent down, so it explains all things. Yeah, and so um, we need to be able to understand. We need to be able to understand it from its root or something. Um, to truly experience. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Needs to be. Yeah, you can actually do a um, good versus evil type thing where you say that translations obviously butcher the rich, uh, uh, mm. you know, the richness of the you know of the of the text. A bigger good versus evil would be the colonizers ripped the our Arabic <laughs> from us. Yeah, good. Actually. Which is hundred percent. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's yes, one of the it, first yeah. things they do is stop you knowing Arabic. Or that all Pakistani spoke Arabic. No, I don't know about yeah. Pakistan, but uh, like Turkey, in Algeria, example, oh, they did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Turkey, they did it. In Egypt today, they're trying to, they're actually, in Egypt, they're trying to take people away from Fusha. They're like, just learn the street Arabic. You don't need to know mm -hmm. Fusha. So that's like a strong good yeah, versus evil. Yeah. Yeah. And if, you, if you're aiming at the, the kind of Gen Z uh, or millennial, because they have that woke activist within them, uh, ten or the century, that that would really appeal to them. Yeah. So, so what I want to understand. But then it needs, a, it needs a sexy hashtag like you know Black Lives Matter, Quran, the Quran matters or something. <laughs> Again, Faisal. <laughs> Just kidding. Again? No, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Quran matters. That's good. No Arabic, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yeah. Arab lives matter. Okay, cool. So um, what I want to ask you is that this is more to do with learning Arabic and all that. Give me some whys and give me some thoughts on why is a scholarship or empowerment fund foundation, why, why is that needed? What's important for that? Um, uh, you can say that money people, shouldn't yeah, okay, be good. a barrier. Yeah, that's good. Money, you know, money shouldn't stop those who have like it's okay it's very rare to find someone willing to put the effort the energy the time in like that's rare enough so we shouldn't make money an yeah. extra barrier on top of those things yeah so the other thing i'd say is that looking back at history is that um those who wanted to study would be provided with funds and things like that um and but now it's not it's, our economy rewards those who want to go into into science or into technology or into ac you know, academics and stuff like that. So this, we're learning things to benefit in the dunya and not necessarily the deen. Okay, so how would you summarize that? So, so uh, well, again, it could be, to... the, the angle is good. The good versus evil angle here is that the modern economy incentivizes 
um, economic growth and not spiritual, not spiritual. growth. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we want to break that, break the system. Hmm. We want to break that. Uh, what's that word these people use? Break the hierarchy. <laughs> um yeah we want to break that by empowering yeah incentivizing people to to go down that in, empower people to uh or incentivize people to um dedicate themselves shun, to, to shun the the economy you know, this, this is like strong language i'm using yeah um yeah, to, to, to shun that and go the other way. Muslims going the other way. <laughs> going their own way. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Uh, maybe you, just, just, you, could, you could actually start off saying, we believe true success lies mm. in the Quran. You start off actually with that and then all this other stuff comes after that. So that's like the, the blanket statement. There are actually so many angles. So we've only, we've come up with two, right? There's another angle of, let's say if this institute is in the UK, then you'll say, well, we need people who are like aware of the UK context to be fully versed in the scripture. <clears throat> and and they, they, they won't be able to do that if they never learn Arabic. So that's another angle. But then ultimately, I think we have to pick one which is going to resonate the most with that avatar, you know, that we laid out. Yeah. I mean, what, one thing I want to ask you guys is that uh, with a fund like this, if it's going to fund someone, what does the uh, what does the after look like? So, okay, I'll give my money to you, right? What does the after look like for me? So basically anyone that person goes on to teach and benefit, that's who you're getting the benefit from. So it's the, it's the uh, all that pyramid scheme, isn't it? That, you know, like they'll go on to benefit um other students and then their students and their mm. students and then their students and yeah you could say it's like compound compounding yeah. reward yeah that's good that's good you could i don't know it's not the most halal uh, muslim friendly analogy but you know like compound yeah. interest analogy probably not best not to use i suppose okay so um, i was thinking muhammad like of this kind of uh diagram where it's like you know those cheesy diagrams where they have a, a triangle and it's like oh, a man oh. and wife and they go up towards Allah. They get As they get closer, they get closer. To Instead, we do, it's the person who wants to learn and you financing it together. You're both actually, to give them that, that, that feeling that you're equally going towards Allah by empowering them to do that thing. Mm. Well, I mean, you know I'm going to screenshot this and you doing that. That's like Illuminati confirmed, man. <laughs> <laughs> You did it over the eye as well. That's that's the. <laughs> okay, so uh, the person that wants to know. Okay, so my question for you is because you kind of both assumed a little bit here. We didn't say this, but you've assumed it. Is that they're going to be teachers, right? So um, because, <clears throat> because obviously that helps to compound the reward and everything. And that's why I'm saying that if someone goes through this thing and dedicates them their life to Quran and Arabic and this like what is the end result in terms of an identity of that person? What would you call someone like that? Well, it depends. What is most attractive to, to the person to donating, right? Is it that they're going to be teachers or is it that, that these people are going to go, go throughout their lives, you know, normal, you could say lives, but they just have that knowledge of Arabic and therefore uh, our knowledge of the Quran and therefore more connected and therefore better Muslims. You know, which is more attractive? I think probably teachers is probably more attractive yeah, yeah, yeah. because, attractive. like you said, it's compounding, isn't it? Okay. Right. So, so I guess what people would maybe like to be part of is creating tens or hundreds of basically, you know, man Ali Khans. You know, people getting yeah, others excited about about learning Arabic, the language of the Quran. Okay, I'm sure this is where you you'd bring in all the the different. Hadith and stuff are about you know um, the, those who learn the Quran. Ah, by that, yeah. learn and teach. Yeah. yeah. So, so what what I wanted to ask you is that so this is good in terms of like a base level, right? So one thing we would love to do is have lots of people who are like going out there and and teaching Arabic, teaching the Quran, and um, mm. 
for you guys, what would you say? Because for me, like stage one is someone, like you said, in this triangle, I mean, you're saying someone, the stage one is basically someone learning uh, Arabic, right? Mm. The next one is probably someone uh, using it, right? Maybe the third one is someone teaching it. But I'm like, what's the ultimate, like, top of pyramid uh, identity for someone who goes all out with this and goes like, fully? What's even better than a teacher? Reviver. Okay, what do you mean by that? So not only are they teaching Arabic, but like I think it's what Nutman Ali Khan did, which is create a whole movement around Wrong, reconnection yeah. to the Quran through Arabic language, basically, right? Um, so more than teaching is a movement, is reviving uh, a, a, an a, a, Quran, excitement. Yeah. Um, I think the word revival or reviver is, is quite powerful. Right? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. But you know, I'm thinking... I, especially because you're is... talking about Live by the Quran Fund. So it's mm. a whole a world where Muslims are, are, are living by the Quran, loving the Quran and living the Quran, yeah. Mm. yeah I mean... Understanding and living by it. But, but you know what I was thinking, Muhammad, because it's about Arabic, mm. what I would like to see in this to make me get excited about donating is the angle, which we've covered now but then it's also the mechanism through which you're going to teach these people because mm. there are 10 ten thousand different courses out there and everybody has a story about oh i tried to learn arabic and i flopped mm. right but if you come now with something to excite me about no no this is the the way this is the one that works this is the one that excites people kind of like the that client we were working with it's probably a year ago now that excited us didn't it it made us think did, yeah. so so this, the way people learn Arabic through your way, it's actually, now it's realistic that many more, you know, bigger proportion of Muslims yeah. in the UK can actually understand Arabic. And because they understand the process, they think, oh, I'm only going to the right guys because they actually have yeah. a proven process and exactly, they'll get the translation exactly. quicker. So yeah, it's true. That's going to be part, that's like 50% of the offer, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think I shared something with you, I mean. Uh, about language and stuff and and that might be a good one for us to use uh, in regards to this right when i was asking you about learning turkish right mm -hmm. um there's so you know basically what we're talking about is how okay mm -hmm. um and so what what this one does is one i kind of shared with you it says go from absolute beginner to confident speaker all without books homework or having to memorize anything uh, this method is the fastest and most effective w way to learn Quranic Arabic. Mm. Something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think? Yeah, obviously, that's that's good for the person doing it. For the one to donate, that is also good. But I think what would be good is the give them a sense that this method, the person that you're sponsoring to to learn this. The method is so proven and it's it basically it's for the masses, you know, it's many people, anyone can kind of learn Arabic through this method rather than it being, rather than your donation being stopping with that one person who go through our institute, we teach the, the person who goes through our institute in a way that they're now going to be able to teach others. So that's mm. it, Muhammad. We don't only teach people who know Arabic. We actually, we don't create people who know Arabic. We create teachers. We create people who actually come out with the ability to pass it on. Yeah. Uh, which is not the, always done. You know. In the trainer uh, type. Trainer, yeah. There's, there's one thing that was coming to mind. You know, if I'm sponsoring someone, I don't really care if it takes two weeks or if it takes two years, right? Are you because because uh, in a way you don't actually want it to be quick and easy you want it to be like uh, you know what they they it's, they're getting the depth and they're getting all the mm. you, know, the, you care yeah. about the time but it's your own time yeah yeah <laughs> true you know what i mean and so and so what i would do about it uh, what i would do actually is you almost make it restrictive you say that uh, basically our objective is people who come through the scholarship fund um not only this is not going to just pay for their tuition this is paying for their living expenses. This is paying for this, this is because so they can fully immerse themselves fully. Because what the Ummah is lacking is true scholarship. It's true, like connection with the Quran. True this, true that. 
because and the reason why we haven't been back in the day we did be, we were able to devote ourselves because there was less distractions less need for pay, putting bill you know, paying your bills and stuff or because things were covered rocks and stuff covered you so now we, we want to take a few selected people that are um a few selected people that we vetted that we applied the, the creme de la creme and we want to fully give them everything and, and so they can thrive and give back to the ummah for me that is what uh, it's, a, it's a less maths model but it's more deep yeah i, I think i think because what i want to do uh, first of all is that i want to keep it generic to most of the um islamic institutes out there because what mm. i would like is for most islamic institutes you know the ones we've worked with the ones we haven't worked with the kind of clients that we've got arabic students i want everyone to just look at this and go okay based on this i'm going to create a fund for our organization mm. so we don't want to make it too super duper yeah where it's unrealistic okay <laughs> they're going to basically go for Mauritania and they're going to sit there for four years and learn like we want it to be like a little bit of a lighter version of that so that people can mm. implement it uh, in their thing right um so i think i think what we have what we have right now is uh, is actually quite good like uh you know what i'm writing down here uh, is actually a real uh, language institute you know and it's a real claim and this is what we're kind of uh, like does my head in is that why do we not have uh, uh, an Arabic way to do this like in terms of Fusha and understanding Arabic like why is that Because mm. it's a method that's been around for so long and our learning of Arabic has been around for hundreds of years maybe thousands right <laughs> so why do we not have something like this where we take absolute we take people from absolute beginner to amazing teacher all without books, homework, or having to memorize anything. Our method is the fastest and most effective way to learn, to become a Quranic Arabic teacher or to become an Arabic teacher. I think we need a better label than just Arabic teacher. Yeah, mm. but this, like inspiring? No, this is what I'm saying. I think Quranic reviver is good. Um, yeah, that's much yeah. better. Yeah, Quranic reviver TM. Because <laughs> that has uh, that has Quran and revive, which is both like good words. Yeah. So. And then, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, and then, then it just becomes the, the revive Quran fund. So basically, all we're all about reviving the Quran. So. In its true form, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what I would do, bro, is that I think an identity is is, is strong. So uh, you know, maybe it's the Quranic Reviver Fund or scholarship or I don't know. I mean, even trust sounds good. What what sounds better, trust or fund or scholarship? Well, trust actually has to be a trust, then. What do you mean? Also, a completely different thing to a fund or a scholarship, isn't it? Mm, okay. So, it, it, fund, fund is fine. Um, yeah. I don't know. Fund or scholarship. Scholarship is better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. If like you're going more uh, academic, and more stuff, yeah. narrowed down, and more. Um, I mean, you could even know. call it a scholarship fund in that sense, isn't it? Or yeah, I mean, it? that's actually technically what it is. A scholarship is what the student receives, but yeah. the fund Funded, for it is a scholarship yeah. fund. Yeah. What's better? Like, we want to call it nice marketing-wise, right? So, Kitty. <laughs> yeah, that's it, what you've written. Scholarship fund, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's what it is. Right. Okay. Is Reviver with O-R or E-R? Yeah, you tell I me. That's what, I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, Muhammad, you know, another thing is, you know, when we talk about raising money for a cause, we mm -hmm. talk about wh how far will my money go, mm. right? And I think if you were an institute thinking of doing something like this, you're going to have to address that question. And, you know, a, a few years ago, we were working with somebody who had a, a scholarship for, you know, their kind of highest level program. And I think it was £10,000 or £20,000, right, for this full-time program. I don't know if it's one year, two years, something like that. Now, that's a lot of money, bro. Like 10, if I imagine I have to give 10,000 pounds to put one person through this program, I, I feel like that's a 
that's just too much, right? I don't care about the bills you need to cover and the staff and the taxes and the, no, that's too much. So, you know, the Institute might want to consider how can they make it so it's like value for money for the donors. You yeah, know? I mean, if you think about something like this, right? So let's imagine someone like Al Maghrib Institute or someone else, right? Or even an Arabic Institute, they could have a fund that's called the Quranic Revival Scholarship Fund, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to then define what the reviver is. That could even just be one course, which is 60 pounds, right? Um, and then if you want to do like a program for them, then they're going to have to do 10 courses, for example. That's 600 pounds, right? Or one course is 200 pounds. But also what the other thing we could do is actually go like, okay, uh, when we say a uh, uh, Quranic reviver, right? It's like a Quranic reviver uh, will, right? Yeah. And then you're like, uh, teach, I don't know, 100. Like their pledge. Yeah. Yeah. Teach 100 uh, students. At least, at least 100 students, yeah. Teach, yeah. Right, teach mm. at least. Yeah, so now this is like what they get out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, teach yeah. at least 100 students to uh, understand, understand Arabic and, uh, and uh, connect with the Quran. Okay, right. What else will a reviver do? I mean, you gave us the definition of bring, bring, bring the Quran to life through uh, workshops and stories or something. Oh, I thought you were going to say clean the masjid toilet. <laughs> Bring the community uh, service to life by uh, delivering lectures at workshops. least. Okay, delivering it lectures, workshops, and seminars. Seminars on the importance of the Quran or no, 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 just on, on the Quran. Yeah, bringing the Quran to life. So I just just yeah, instead of by put through. Oh yeah, by delivering. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, that's okay, fine, that's cool. Fine. What else will arrive? They, they should also um, I mean, in the... to do ongoing uh, ongoing training. So like once a year, they have to attend Refresh. some kind of uh, not necessarily Arabic stuff, but tra uh, teaching, like improve their teaching, attend some kind of teacher training once a year. Was it C C P D or whatever? Yeah. In the, I, I, would, I would actually make it better. Aim for mastery in their teaching through attending yeah. XYZ. Mastery. Yeah, mastery. Mastery. Was an R missing. <laughs> R. I would actually, to encourage people, to, because you obviously want this to be like a bit of a dawah thing, so um, we'll go to, you know, we'll teach it in their language or something. So maybe go back to their countries and do maybe, maybe that's how. It, so, so the impact is worldwide? Yeah, I mean, what, what you could do is like, you know, this teach at least 100 students. I mean, if someone's on it properly in their life, how many people do you think they'll train, teach? Uh, maybe like 50 a year. Yeah, so do you think they could do a thousand or 500? 500 is more realistic, right? Throughout their life, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that we, like a revival would do? You could have something a bit fluffy, but still, you know, solid, which is, you know, um, commit to following the Quran or living by the Quran as much as mm. you know possible whatever because like now they've understood it now we want to see it in action um, origin others oh. Anything else? What else? Like, you, you, because we need to stop thinking about this as a reviver and think about someone who's actually really deep. I mean, someone like Norman Khan, right? Like, obviously, he's had global impact in what he's done, 
Um, mm. But what did he actually do? Like, let's imagine you're basing this on someone like Normani Khan, but you know they just have local impact, right? What what does it look like? What did he do? I mean, he actually worked a lot of uh, on increasing the desire as well. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. He made it accessible, didn't he? That's what he did. He made it okay, the Quran very accessible through storytelling. That's what he did. Yeah, so like public lectures and ongoing improvement of teaching skills. Uh, that's what you get with the Norman Ali Khan kind of style. Um, what about public speaking training? Like, you know? Yeah, that's good. What, he would, he would get it or he would... Yeah, he, he, you know, would, if, he would, you, if you're going to be that kind of, yes, if you're going to yes. be a Norman Ali Khan figure in your community, you're going to be really good public speaker. Yeah, so you can say that a current arrival will receive um, x, you know, um, x many hours of public speaking training that the likes of X Y Z have received. Well, what you would say is will be uh, will be a uh, Muhammad Arshad client. Confident, <laughs> public. Confident and engaging. Yeah, nothing. Oh. Anything else? Any more for any more? I mean, you could say that, you know, these 500 students that they teach, I mean, you could say a certain percentage of those they'll do it on a voluntary basis or something. I mean, what what's a realistic number of these five hundred students? Like, if if you actually teach someone five hundred people, what's a realistic number of uh, them to become teachers? Like one in ten will no. teach someone else. One in twenty, maybe. Oh, in what capacity teacher? Like, be a full-time teacher? Or? No, no, just teach I, I, others. I mean, it, I mean it, look, it depends on, on the culture. And so if, like, for example, remember we spoke to DQ. They said that, look, we only teach with the expectation that they're going to go off and teach others. And we inculcate that into the, mm. into our methodology and into a way of... Mm. Kind teaching. of like those... So you, what is it? Those... Uh, it, yeah, I guess those, like, pyramid schemes where it's like, you know, if you're going to come, you've got to bring someone or mm. you've got to get your family involved, get your friend. You know, you can create a culture, yeah. Incentivize that somehow. Um, yeah. So, the yeah, thing what I'm there, saying, uh, Muhammad, rather, rather, is hold on, hold on. what I'm saying, Muhammad, is yeah. that these 500 students, we, I think what would be good for people to see is that it's going to be accessible. Right, they're yeah. making Arabic learning more accessible. So if you say that 20% of those students they teach would be for free, yeah. now it's like, okay, yeah, so they're, okay, they're gonna be a teacher, they're gonna be maybe charging for their, their lessons, but they're always gonna have that level of volunteering or, you know. I, I mean, I was thinking that these 500 students would be for free. So you, you're thinking these would be paid, yeah? No, I mean, yeah, I'm just, just to write down in black and white that certain amount will be free. The rest is up yeah. to them. Okay, so let's put that down as uh, well. Yeah. Giving access for, for free. What, what I was thinking was that, it's not linked to the chronic revival thing, but it was linked to what you were saying before about, oh, um, like a £10,000 versus £600 or whatever. You can yeah. actually do it a little bit like a crowdfunding campaign where um, there's the certain levels. And so the first perk, you could say, is the uh, 500 or £300 covers all of the books that they need to study. And then uh, a £1,000 covers the cost of X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? So you could do, actually do it like that and have different levels that they, they contribute to. Mm. Or what if they so everyone's, just... everyone's, everyone's contributing to the revival um, But it might be oh, I'm only paying for one person's books Or I'm paying for one person's uh, Oh yeah yeah of course in the perks You can do it like yeah, that in the perks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because obviously yeah, Not everyone's going to have £600 to give And stuff Yeah that's good But what, what, uh, but what I was suggesting Is if you say that 
oh, uh, a, a UK-based institute will get somebody through the program for £5,000. But the way we've set it up is we've actually got a place that we've vetted and they're really good in whatever, Egypt or Turkey or whatever. And we actually can get a student through that for just £1,000. You know, it feels better value for money for the donor. Yeah, and, and, and you know, if you do that, what happens then is that these numbers start to become very different. Like if you actually could, for example, get someone in a third world country and, you know, start paying them accordingly, that 500 number will become 5,000 mm. throughout their life, right? Mm. So that, that's quite, quite important as well. But it depends on the context. Like you said, uh, a lot of the Islamic institutes we're talking about, they operate in the Western world, right? And so people who are supporting them may want that kind of thing, that support to be in the Western yeah. world. Maybe, maybe one thing that a current revival will do as part of their curriculum is that they will spend, you know, six months Abroad. Yeah, exactly. Immersion, isn't it? Yeah, immersion, yeah. It's like they, we, they're going to learn with our proven method, right? But they're going to do it in an immer fully immersive uh, yeah. uh, environment. Context environment, environment. Yeah. 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 And that brings the cost down. You get it? Yeah. yeah so in a way, you could also say uh, be trained in a fully immersive the immersive and traditional yeah that's good islamic scholar scholarly environment okay we got like 20 minutes left okay cool yeah I, I think i think i think we're done i don't know if there's anything else you guys think we should do uh, apart from because we're quite clear on uh, what, is that, is it? What, what we've done here is what you've been like been very clear on the what the wow offer is essentially yeah so for me like it's very simple like you know just kind of like we we know what it's about we know what it is uh, we know the reasons why it's doing it we know like roughly how it would do it now this statement by the way i think we take people from absolute beginner to quranic revival that's fine right uh, now uh, this gives them the ability to teach see that that's what will be good to teach uh, others to teach oh, yeah. others without books homework or having to memorize anything our method is fast and most effective to become uh, a Quranic and uh, I, yeah, I... Uh, it's not our method is the fastest and most effective to become a uh, uh, to become someone who understands Quran, is that what it is? Or no, I mean, okay, if you think that, look, uh, if, by this you're investing in the Quranic revival. Um, I, so we should be saying that no, that's what we're trying to create. We, want, we don't want someone who can just understand the Quran because the problem with those guys is that they're, they're a dime a dozen and they don't understand the the, yeah. the, the nature of the world. But, and all what, that. what I'm saying, firstly, and, and I want to say it very plainly, actually, for anyone who's watching and is into. Uh, Arabic teaching is that the methodology we're talking about here is uh, Michel Thomas, right? And the way Michel Thomas works is he's a very he's a very famous guy. Uh, he's dead now, but he taught all of the famous Hollywood actors and actresses how to speak a language. And the way he would do it is within the space of like four or five hours, he would get them speaking the language, right? Um, and he would say to them that, look, at the start of it, the program, he's like, look, what you need to realize is that I am the teacher, you're the student. You don't need to worry about remembering. You don't need to worry about memorizing. You don't need to worry about homework. You don't need to worry about doing anything. This is all on me to do as your teacher, right? So it's like a very empowering way to learn a language. And I've done uh, parts of uh, the French course. And I can tell you, like, within four or five hours, you are speaking, like, fluent French, as in, like, you could, like, get yourself by Okay, uh, and that's why I'm saying that from an Islamic perspective. Oh, drop a line. You have to drop a line. You can't just say that. No. Avez-vous une réservation pour moi pour ce soir? I mean, he speaks, he speaks French, so. That means, uh, do you have or have you a reservation for me for tonight? Anyway, yeah. so um, what, what I'm trying so to say is. What you're saying, Mohammed, is that I wasted like seven years of my life learning French. Definitely. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I think that a lot of people waste a lot of their lives. Uh, learning Quranic Arabic in the same way. Now, of course, you know, with, with French and English, um, it's actually a very easy uh, yeah, transition, transition because 70, 80% of our words in English come from French words, uh, you know. So 
that makes it very easy as opposed to if you're going from Arabic to English, which is like completely disconnected, right? So Urdu and Arabic might be very doable in the same way, right? Because for example, we have like, uh, you know, a lot of the words that you'll see like Kursi mm. and all this kind lekin. of stuff. Yeah, lekin, <laughs> lekin, lekin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can see how someone who's an Urdu speaker should, you know, if you just teach them these tricks that Michelle Thomas used to teach, should grab it very, very quickly, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that this, this is what I'm saying, that I'm hoping that anyone that's watching this would look at Michel Thomas, look at his methodology and go, you know what, I'm a great Arabic teacher. I could create this methodology very easily, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and what you're saying as well is when it comes to the marketing uh, and raising a fund, something like this, you're ultimately going to need a really good end product. You're going to yes. need good results and that's going to help you with your marketing. Mm. yeah like you imagine bro like throughout my life since i did michelle thomas like um i've told dozens and dozens of people i think about him right um and you know this is what happens that when you've got something that's a wow product people will go and just it's remarkable people just keep talking about it and telling mm. others about it purple right? cow uh, yeah. purple cow type of thing so in that same way i think that part of this like we always say is actually having a great product like we focus a lot on the marketing but like you've said, I believe that, you know, if Michelle Thomas can do this with, with something like this, I believe we can definitely do mm. it with Quranic Arabic. Have you told more people about Michelle Thomas or Islam? <laughs> <laughs> I would hope Islam. But, you know, from, I mean, if you, asked, if you asked me like Tony Robbins or Islam, then maybe that would have been a close kind of, I would have to think about it. But yeah, definitely Islam. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, bro. Good stuff. I think let's, let's get your summary. I mean, and we can, uh, yeah, it. yeah. I, I do think one thing we could work on more if we were to like fully do this more is, um, the problem, right? So, you know, you might start any kind of campaign video or something with what is the problem? The problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Faisal. Um, what is the problem? Why are, like we need to connect the lack of Arabic understanding to some kind of suffering, some kind of pain. Um, so that would be good, Yanni, from the angle. Yeah. It's from and, there. And it's, it's kind of like the TMQ angle, right? Which is, that's, that's what we did, isn't it? We actually sat down, we yeah. thought about it, and we said, if you don't understand Arabic properly, then your experience of the Quran is limited. Yeah. If your experience of the Quran is limited, then your connection with Allah is deficient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. this I mean, is we actually give the analogy, don't we? Like, imagine getting um, directions in a foreign country when you're lost. Yeah, in you a foreign yeah. language. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Unless you know yeah. Michelle Thomas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you could also go down the route of, for example, uh, in the UK. You know, the, w there's a lost generation coming up now, where mm. uh, they yeah. they they've grown up with their phone, social media, depression. They, they don't have the purpose identity problems and this can all be solved through this, for example, you know? Yeah. So anyway, having a very strong problem and then linking it to the solution, the solution being Arabic, but then Arabic, you need to say, uh, use what we've put here basically, which was the why, you know, use all of that. So I think that would like be a, the, the cherry on the top and stuff. And, and just finally, Muhammad, like, so you've got all of this, you've, you know, you've you know, polished what we've done a little bit now. Is this something where you put it on your website? Do you do like a launch good campaign? What were you thinking in terms of how you would go out there for this? Yes, yeah, so I think it depends on the size of uh, the business or the organization. If the organization has a decent amount of following uh, and you can get some real traffic to this and stuff, I think a launch good campaign would be very good, especially during yeah. Ramadan time because Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Right. So at that time, if you're already into Arabic education, you do this whole Quranic reviver thing. Uh, and I think it's important to point out here, bro, that creating an identity is always more important than uh, a description. Right. So if we had called it like, you know, live by the Quran or give the gifts of the Quran, it's not as powerful as Quranic reviver because that's an identity of a, yeah. a person. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like going to Ramadan, going to launch good with this whole thing of this identity of, of what we're trying to do. It's like, it's like someone we aspire to be like, uh, I think definitely launch good will, will be one option. I think what mm. you said already is that anyone buying the course should be told about this through the indoctrination series. Once they kind of uh, purchase and everything, I think I would definitely put it on my website and everything. And 
I, I would shout about it because it's like one of those do good kind of things which makes you feel good and you're doing something for the sake of Allah and all of that stuff you know yeah and, and ideally what you want is that you can speak about people who after learning Arabic they transform themselves they then transform their community and they, they have stories of people yeah. who've uh, yeah. had a whole new life for them after learning Arabic for example yeah and this is this is yeah. what Ayur has done very well you know a lot of the du'ats that um, we're hiring now are like um, in, in other countries where they're working we're able to pay them full time in that sense right and so because they're doing that they're actually changing whole communities I'm talking about if you've seen the Ayur videos like the whole village accepting Islam like that's powerful mm -hmm. right full that's a reviver transformation like you've just changed the whole generation and the generations to come because yeah. of that one guy who mm. went out there and made a deal about it you know mm. yeah and, but, and but what, actually... you, what you'd also do you could also mm. have like a almost like a challenge or something where you sort of say okay like like the quran arriving challenge and so so i always like it becomes a bit of a cool thing that all right everyone mm. you know how much can, can we how much can we learn today or this week and the prizes are given away and and for, for that for the purpose of that camp of that like launch good campaign or something like because you you'll want to get a lot of buzz and energy that like, you could do something along those lines as well mm, yeah that's yeah, good I, like, yeah i was going to say a, a hack as well that i would definitely use is i would go all the way through bayana's material and find people who are talking about having learnt arabic right from bayana and talk about how their life changed and that i would use that actually in my material right because it's the same transformation in terms of i'm allowing people to yeah. learn arabic they allow some let mm. me if i don't have like success stories already i would borrow their success stories and say this is what life with arabic yeah. looks like yeah you know exactly. so that'll be a hack that's really okay hack, yeah. okay so what we did uh, in this episode episode 10 of marketing while muslim is we sat down to think of how can we come up with a scholarship fund for an Arabic Institute. So they already have their students coming in, but they also want to enable people to come in who can't afford to like uh, pay for it themselves. So they need to come to come up with a campaign, an angle, a hook for people to be interested and inspired to give towards this. So what we did is we started with who we're going after, who's the person that we would expect to give. And we start with that because we want to understand what's going on in their mind and what would attract them. Then we talked about the what. What is this scholarship thing? What do we call it? What identity and name can we give it, which will allow us to uh, inspire those people to give and, and want to be part of this movement? Then we talked about why. Why should they give? What is the problem we're solving? What is the solution? And how is it actually going to transform the, the world? We also came up with a few uh, good versus evils where uh, we see a big evil in the world because of the Arabic thing. And we're coming in to be the good to that evil right the kind of nem nemesis to that evil and then finally we talked about the how how are we going to do this how are we going to do it better than others cheaper than others faster than others and how are we actually going to create more than just uh, somebody who can read the quran or understand the quran for themselves but somebody who we, we're labeling a quran reviver so beyond just having the outcome of okay this guy that you paid you know a thousand pounds for knows arabic we're actually hopefully creating a whole a change within a community, within a family, and within a person. And that's the kind of inspiration and the kind of movement which moves people to uh, give money to that. And then we just wrapped up, we're talking about how we would uh, potentially put on launch good, try and drive traffic to that, and um, put on the website and, and really shout about it and have it as one of our core kind of offerings for the Institute. And uh, with that, uh, we can end there, inshallah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can catch this on audio version, video version, and uh, check out muslimco.com if you're interested in anything marketing, really, uh, or growing your business. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from myself and Muslim CEO. <laughs>